In this presentation, we'll explain the role of the clearinghouse in the futures market. In particular, we'll explain margin accounts and daily marking to market. By the way, this image shows trading at the Chicago Board of Trade in 1905. The futures market has two pieces. There's the exchange, where traders trade, and then there's the clearinghouse. The clearinghouse acts as a guarantor to the members on the exchange, thereby ensuring contract fulfillment if either party defaults. They do this through margin requirements and daily marking to market. One of the other benefits of a clearinghouse is that it allows traders to close a position before maturity through offset. Offset trades are explained in a separate video, which should be viewed after this one. In this video, we'll work through a hypothetical example of a farmer who trades with a baker. The farmer grows wheat, wants to sell wheat at harvest, wants to lock in the sale price of that wheat today. Why? The farmer's worried about a price drop, and today's futures price is attractive. The baker needs wheat to make bread, wants to buy wheat at a future date, and wants to lock in the purchase price today. Why? Well, the baker's worried about prices going up and squeezing profits, and today's futures price is attractive. In reality, each trader would trade through a broker who was, in turn, a member of the futures exchange and its affiliated clearinghouse. In this example, we'll act as if the traders engage with the exchange directly. We'll assume that the farmer places an order to sell one wheat futures contract and the baker places an order to buy one wheat futures contract. Assume that the contract is for one bushel at a price of $100 for delivery on date big T. Once their orders are matched by the exchange, the two traders have a legally binding obligation to each other to deliver or take delivery of the underlying asset at the agreed futures price of $100. Under the process of novation, the clearinghouse inserts itself into the middle of the trade and becomes the counterparty to each trader. It dissolves the original contract and the clearinghouse becomes the buyer for every seller and the seller for every buyer. Under novation, the clearinghouse takes on considerable counterparty risk, the risk that one of the counterparties defaults on its obligation. To manage this risk, the clearinghouse requires that each trader deposit money in its trading account, called margin. In this example, we'll assume the trade is executed on day t equals 1 when the price is $100. Each trader deposits margin of $5. Now let's move forward to day t equals 2. At the end of the day, the futures exchange posts an end of day settlement price of $106. So at the end of day 2, the baker, who is long, has a daily profit of $6 since the price rose on day 2. The farmer has a short position and so loses $6. The clearinghouse takes $6 from the farmer's account and transfers it to the account of the baker. This daily reckoning is called marking to market. On day t equals 3, the futures settles at a price of $97. The difference between $106 and $97 is $9. Compared to the first day, we've had a reversal of fortunes. The baker has lost and the farmer has now profited by $9. The clearinghouse takes $9 from the baker's account and transfers it to the farmer's account. If we continue with the example, we can see that the price fluctuates daily. On day t equals 4, it rises from $97 to $109, and that's a profit of $12 for the baker. The clearinghouse transfers $12 to the baker's account. As we go through time, Money will continue to go backwards and forwards on a daily basis between the clearinghouse accounts of the two traders. Eventually, we get to the last day in the life of the futures contract, and the final futures price is $125. If we were to add up the sum of the daily profits and losses, 
then it's going to come to the fact that the farmer will have paid away $25 to the baker. In other words, the farmer's cumulative loss is $25 and the baker's cumulative profit is plus $25. Let's assume that both traders hold their positions until expiry. Upon expiry, the short side, the farmer, delivers wheat and the long side, the baker, takes delivery. Delivery and payment occur through the clearinghouse. The long side, the baker, pays. And the price they pay is the settlement price on the expiry day, which in this case is $125. This price may seem wrong, since the whole premise of the futures contract is that the baker committed to buying at $100 when the futures contract was stuck. But don't forget that the baker has received a sum of $25 in daily profits transferred through the daily marking to market process. If we add the cumulative profit to the outlay of $125, the net price to the baker is indeed $100, which conforms with our intuition. In contrast, the farmer will receive the final settlement price of $125, but he has paid away $25 in daily losses, so his net receipt is again $100 as we expected. Because there's been no default, the initial margins are returned to the respective traders. So, with this example, we can understand the role played by the central clearinghouse. It acts like a central bank between the various traders, administering the various cash flows on a day-to-day -day basis, and it orchestrates settlement at the end of the life of the futures contract. In another presentation, we'll look at an additional benefit of the clearinghouse, which is that it allows traders to exit a futures position before maturity using an offset trade.